Well, today I'm back at the Orcs Lakes and now spring is finally here for definite. Loads of nice weather lately, water temperatures are on the up. And once them water temperatures start to get up, if there's one bait I love to fish with, it's got to be meat. Now, with meat, it's almost like it's addictive to the fish. Once they start eating it, your peg just tends to get better and better and better as the day goes on. And that lends itself perfectly for throwing your meat in on a short line, slightly out of your way, and priming it for later in the day. Because it does tend to get better and better, it draws more and more fish in, and by the time you go on and fish it, they're really confident, and you can catch loads and loads of fish in them later stages of either your pleasure session or your match. So, I just wanted to run you through how I go about fishing with meat. Now, on a venue like this, it's full of carp from sort of two to five pound, and they, for me, are the perfect meat fish. You can draw numbers of them into your peg, and they love to eat meat. So, first of all, I just want to talk about my rigs. My first rig, so the water's still quite cold. Um, although it is on the up, the temperatures are going up, it's still not summer. And I've got a couple of rigs set up which will just sort of help me catch fish no matter how it's fishing. If the fishing's good, I've got a positive rig. And if it's not quite so good and I'm having to work a bit harder for them bites, I've got my lighter rig. So first up, the lighter rig. Both rigs are the same line same elastic and same hooks the only difference is the floor and the shot and pattern so first of all elastic wise i've got 13 jura slip soft enough on the strike that the fish can swim out my peg not really disturb anything but plenty of power to net them hard, hard fighting carp mainline all 172 slick silk again nice and strong nice and durable not going to let me down float wise this is a float i've used a lot in a lot of the videos I've done, but it's a prototype that'll hopefully be released soon from Gazmalum. But it's basically nice slim body, a carbon stem, and a 1.5 mil solid bristle. Again, because it's still cold, the bites might not be quite as positive as normal, although generally on meat they are very positive. I can leave a little bit of that solid bristle showing so I can distinguish liners and that type of thing, but I'll get a very, very positive bite. That's a 4 by 12 float. And it's shot a dead simple over the bottom half of my rig. I've just got some number 10s strung out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven number 10s. And just one smaller shot above it here. Just to shot it exactly how I want. Hook length wise. 0133 slick silk. And that's to a size 16 GPM. And then that, if you can see there, is tied knotless knot with a band on it. Now that band I'll just stretch out on my bait and needle and pull my meat onto that it'll secure it really nice and to be honest for smaller fish like this i always hair rig my meat now i find i hit more bites and i just get more bites i get a better hook hold i don't miss as many and for me it's just more efficient puts more fish in my net my other rig like i said exactly the same elastic 13 drew with slip 0172 slick silk main line hook length wise same again 0133 and then the float is exactly the same float, but this time it's a 4x14 version. And then we're moving down. Oh, I've hooked myself. Let's undo that. Moving down from there, just above my hook length, I've got a bulk of shot. They're number nines. And then I've got a six inch hook length. That's again all 133 slick silk. And I've got one number 10 halfway down it. Much more positive than the other rig, and when the fishing's good, I'll use that. I can keep my rig exactly where I want it. Nice positive bite. I'm going to hook everything. And again, the same size 16 GPM with a bait band to hair rig my meat. So nice simple rigs, but both doing something a little bit different. One for when the fishing's a bit more difficult, and I might need to induce a few more bites, and then a nice positive rig for when the fishing's good, and I'm getting loads of bites. So I'll go and get some fishing done now, and I'll talk to you a bit more about the feeding and what I'm feeding and how I'm feeding while I fish and hopefully I'm going to catch a load of fish.
Right, when it comes to bait choice, loads of things you can do with meat. You can dye it, you can flavour it, you can riddle it, anything you want really. And while a lot of people do that, I have a lot of confidence in it. Personally, plain old meat is the way forward for me. The only thing I do to it, I've got my cubes there, six mil, sort of size-wise I look to suit it to the fish I'm catching. So the small carp I'm fishing for today, I'm gonna to fish smaller cubes of meat. If I was fishing for big carp, I might go for seven or eight mil. But today, six is a perfect. Now, the only thing I do to it, I used to wash all of the fat off my meat and I'd wash it for two or three minutes in hot water, try and clean as much of that fat off as I can and help it sink. But I've changed my mind on that. Um, coming here in summer, I've often seen the fish up on the surface gobbing at the fat that's floating on the surface and I think that just shows how much the fish like the fat in the meat. So now I try and leave it on. But I obviously don't want them fish gobbing on the surface. So what I try and do just get some water, cover my meat, like you can see there, and then let's give it a good swirl around. Now, obviously, I'm not doing this with hot water like I would before and taking all the fat out of the meat, but all that does is just take a little layer off the top, cleans it up a little bit, I'll pour the water off, and now when I throw that meat in, you can see all the fat that's come off it on my hands. When I throw that meat in now, it's all going to sink, and there's not quite as much fat hanging about on the surface and drawing them fish up. It just means I can keep the fish on the bottom that little bit easier. But as far as bait's concerned, always just plain meat for me. The fish love eating it, the fish love the taste of it, and it, that is what they're coming in your peg for. I can't personally see any reason for doing anything else with it. So I just fish with it as it is. The only other thing I might bring with me is some slightly bigger cubes from the hook. Right, when it comes to feeding your peg, the first thing I'm looking to do is build that peg up. Like I said earlier, I'm not gonna be fishing this line all match. I'm gonna leave it to develop. I'm gonna feed it maybe two, three hours. And for that time, I'm not gonna draw the fish in, build my peg up and get them competing for bait. So I'm gonna feed it nice and regular with sort of two, three, four pieces of meat. Just keep something falling through the water bit of noise on the surface, bit of attraction. And that's gonna build my peg up for later in the match when I wanna fish it. Now when I first start fishing it, I'm gonna keep feeding the same. I'm gonna feed some bait over the top of my float, small amounts and regularly. That's how I've been feeding, so I'll try and catch them like that. Oh, that was a lovely positive bite. Now, that way of feeding can work brilliantly on a sort of day generally, when it's been cold overnight and then through the day the sun's shining and it's bright skies and the lake's flat. And yet the fish naturally are milling about off the bottom, sort of cruising about a little bit. That bait falling through the water draws them into the peg and they can follow it down to the bottom. And that of course lends itself perfectly to that lighter rig that you've got set up. You can lift and drop, you can keep laying it in, keep that bait falling through the water. It's a lovely fish. Keep that bait falling through the water, you can mimic what you're doing with your feed, with your rig. Proper meat fish them, sort of three pound plus. Brilliant stamp for this lake. And so I was talking, you can mimic feeding with your rig, 
and you can catch a lot of fish that way and especially on them sort of days I mentioned when it's being cold you've got your bright blue sky and the fish are naturally off the bottom other days and today's a prime example it's a bit windy it's been cloudy most of the day although the sun's come out now and the fish aren't so much sort of milling about in them upper layers and them type of days today's a prime example it's generally much better to hook a fish and like you just see me do when I hook that one throw a volume of bait in so I threw in sort of 10 or 12 pieces of meat I've let it settle and I'll go back in and put my rig in over the top of it and then I'm just going to sit and wait I wait for like I had then nice positive bite it'll go under very fast I'll strike hook the fish throw some more bait in and just repeat the process and it's a really really easy way of catching them that once they're in your peg I'm not having to feed to draw the fish in anymore because I've already got them there and now I'm just looking at concentrating them on the bottom where they become much easier to catch I'm not going to get line bites I'm not going to get foul hookers because I haven't got that constant stream of bait going in anymore Right, once again, the Orcs has not let me down. Absolutely brilliant days fishing today. I've caught loads and loads of fish. Um, and I think it's gone to show just how effective that meat can be. Once the fish do start eating it, they really do compete for it. They don't want to leave your peg until they've had every single last bit. And towards the end of the day, I've actually even managed to catch a few fish shallow, which I just think shows how well they can compete for it. We're only just coming out of February. We're still only just out of winter coming into spring. Water's not that warm yet, but once the fish start eating that meat, it can be absolutely deadly. So, if you're looking at fishing with meat over the coming weeks or months, hopefully you've picked up a tip or two, give you an idea about my, the way I fish with it, the, my rigs, my feeding, and hopefully that'll help you out along the way. If there's anything else you want to know, just leave a question in the comments and I will do my very best to answer it for you. And again, if you watch the videos regularly, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll be back again soon with my next video.